Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a fun little video for you. We're gonna teach you everything you need to know about how to replace and repaint your front bumper cover. I have an 07 Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee here that we're gonna replace the front bumper on. It's for a customer. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps it takes and the materials you need to get this job done. So with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't liked and subscribed. Okay, let's go over some of the things you're going to need to complete this project of painting your front bumper or any bumper or any panel on your vehicle. Um, you're going to need sandpaper. This is, for this purpose, this bumper, 600 grit. If you're painting a, a different kind of panel, you might be able to use uh, 320. But with silver, I want to use 600 to eliminate any deep scratches that the metallics may lay in and it may look at, make it look funny after you paint it. 600 won't do that. You can uh, paint over this with the heavy metallic paint jobs, paint, and it will lay out nicely, okay? So for the areas that you can't get into with the 600, you're gonna use this 1500 grit gray Scotch-Brite pad. This is going to get into all those little uh, detailed areas that you can't get with the sandpaper. And uh, it's flexible and, it, and you can get in there really well with it. You want every area on that bumper to be scuffed and the shine to be knocked off so the paint adheres properly. The next thing you want to do is you need to get, you need to have wax and grease remover. This is wax and grease remover. This is a product I purchased at O'Reilly's. It works beautifully. Uh, you can purchase stuff online. Uh, you can use rubbing alcohol. Um, I would limit myself to those two things, but this would be ideal. Um, I'll, I'll put links in the description to all these products if you're interested but you want to be able to remove any dust or contaminants that are on the bumper um, before you paint it, okay? And this will do it. And what you do is you wipe it on with a paper towel. This is a shop, shop towels that are lint-free, and you wipe it on, and then you wipe it off. And it's very important that you wipe it off uh, because what it does is it lifts any contaminants, and then you wipe them off, and that gets rid of them. The other thing you need is a tack rag. Tack rag, this is a sticky rag that um, basically tacks off all any dust or contaminants that fall on the vehicle or fall on the panel. So when you paint it, you're going to let it dry for about 10 minutes, let it flash. Before you put your next coat on, you're going to tack rag it. That'll remove those uh, dust particles so they're not embedded in the paint before you clear it. Before each coat, you want to tack rag it. And then before you clear it, you want to tack rag it. So you need one of those. You're also going to need some kind of clear coat. You can use, if you're using an automotive spray gun, you can get a clear coat um, that's sprayable with a spray gun. I'm gonna put links to what I use in the description. It's a very uh, good clear. It's, in, in, it's inexpensive. It's not a very expensive clear, so. But it buffs nice, it has a nice gloss, nice shine, and it's gonna have the durability that you're looking for, especially for a DIY project. Um, you're also going to need the paint, and you can get that at your local uh, automotive paint supplier, or and they may even be able to put it in an aerosol can if you do not have a automotive spray gun. I'm not sure. It just depends on the color, and it depends on the uh, business and if they can do that or not. So with that being said, I'm going to show you how to find your paint code, and we're going to do that now. Okay, this is where you're gonna find your paint code. I am on the driver's door of this Jeep, and there's a, there's a paint code tag right here, and you can see right there it says paint PSB. Now, this is on the door. On Jeeps, sometimes they're on the door, sometimes they're on the door jam, which would be right in there somewhere, or on there, there's gonna be a tag, and it's gonna say something similar to this, you know, paint or PNT. Now Fords I know are in the door jam. Um, most of like Hondas are in the door jam. Most of them are in the door jam somewhere. Okay. And Honda is going to be an NH number. Um, if you're looking at a Chevy, it's going to be in the glove box. Any GM product is going to be in the glove box. It's going to start with a WA and it's going to have it four uh, digits after that. Okay. 
and then some of the German ones are under the hood. So if you have any questions or about locating a paint code, uh, just leave a comment below and you know I can uh, give you that information. Or there's another easy way is you can call your local dealer for whatever manufacturer uh, of vehicle you have, give them the VIN number and they will give you the paint code. So that's, if everything else fails, that's how you can do it. Okay. Okay, so we got it all scuffed. Uh, got in there really well, as best we can. Um, you're not gonna be able to get into all the really tight spaces, like down in here. You know, I sanded down in there the best I can. Um, <clears throat> but the fog light goes in there anyway. Uh, we're gonna use some Bulldog Adhesion Promoter, and that's gonna help for those areas that you don't quite get. Okay, so we have the bumper. You saw me uh, use the prep solvent to clean it and wipe it off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack rag it in between that. So, I'm going to prep out my gun to spray the Bulldog on it. This is the Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. Okay, um, this is uh, sprayable out of a uh, gun. You can get it in an aerosol can. I will leave it in the description below. But what I'm going to do is go over and tack rag this just before I put that bulldog on. Because the bulldog uh, promotes adhesion, so therefore things stick to it. So I'm going to uh, tack rag it, move, remove all the lint just before I spray the bulldog on. And then I'll have my paint ready and I'll start spraying the paint. Now, once I get the first coat of paint on it, I'll stop the video and show you some techniques to painting it, some tips and tricks in painting and how to go about that. So let's uh, continue on. We just got done spraying this. I just put a uh, medium coat on and basically uh, you don't need a lot of pressure If you're using a, a gun such as this, um, this is a this is a GTI Pro, and it's a replica. It's not a uh, original. This is kind of like a generic, and it works great. Um, I've got more expensive guns. I've got you know $500 guns, and right now I'm just I'm digging this one. The other one, the other guns I have actually use more material than this. So this is actually a high quality gun. I think it was like $110. So um, not too bad. Uh, the DeVilvis GTI is a really, the original one is a really good gun. Um, but so what I did, you don't need a lot of pressure. Let me just give you a, a quick idea of how to work a gun. This is the fan pattern. That That's like how, so how, your uh, spray pattern is okay so the when you turn it in it narrows the pattern you saw me I narrowed the pattern to do inside where the fog lights go and I turned the volume way down because the narrow the more narrow your pattern the more material that's coming out in that area so you need to make sure if you're using a gun then you turn your volume control down this is the volume this is how much paints coming out of the gun okay Air pressure control, which I, I just leave that wide open because I control it here, okay? So I turned this about one turn, narrowed the pattern, and I did inside all the, all the little areas that are hard to get to when you're just doing a normal spray pattern. Then I opened it up to full, full open on the spray pattern, and then two turns on this. You don't need a, if you're starting out, I would, lean towards less material and less pressure until you kind of get the hang of it, okay? 
So two turns on this was plenty of material. You still need at least, I would say start out with 20 PSI at the, at the regulator, okay? Um, and if it's coming out too wet, just turn your, turn your volume down a little bit and that will give you more control. It's not gonna create as many fumes and that kind of thing, especially if you're doing it yourself. You can buy an inexpensive gun, Harbor Freight for when they're on sale, $9. And it will spray perfectly fine to do this bumper. Should have no problems with it. Just make sure it's clean before you use it. And you should be able to do that. And you can use, on a, on, actually on a small bumper like this, I would suggest a, a small mini gun. That would be easy to control. You don't need as much air pressure. So if you have a small compressor, a mini gun is going to spray this just fine and you're not going to need a bigger compressor to do it because um, these bigger guns use a little bit more uh, air cfms to they needed a little bit more cfms to get a nice finish okay now you may be doing it with an aerosol can which with an aerosol can you're going to want to just take your time start out with light coats and build uh, you have to have a little bit of patience you don't want to run it you, you want to uh, just evenly apply the coats and do it uh, gradually, okay? And then the clear coat, you'll do a, a, a medium coat on the first coat, and then the second coat, you wanna do a wetter coat, and the finished coat. So, <clears throat> we're gonna put a, probably two to three more coats on this, make sure it's all covered, and then we're gonna move on to clear. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've forgotten. Um, I'm sure there is. There's a lot of uh, a lot of aspects to this, but I'm kind of giving you a general idea. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention: always wear your respirator. Always wear a respirator when you're painting. This stuff is very bad for you, so you need to at least have a respirator on. Charcoal filter respirator. Like I said, I'll leave all the links in the description on these products. But yes, you definitely want a respirator if you're in an enclosed environment. Even in an open environment, I would wear one, but that's up to you. Okay, so we have have all of our paint on. It's got a nice uniform finish. I'll show you here. And this is what it should like should or should look like. It should not be look like look blotchy or really dry. It should be smooth and uniform. Okay. So next step. I'm gonna give you some paint techniques on, on spraying. And you may not be using a gun, like I said, but if you're using a spray gun, um, keys to using a spray gun. When you're spraying a panel, here's a panel. You want the spray pattern, which comes out like this, to be parallel with the panel you're spraying at all times, or as it's impossible to do it at all times, especially on a bumper like this. Let me show you. So, when I'm spraying this, I'm gonna follow the curves of the bumper, keeping it parallel. When, I, when there's a, a 
a rise in the bumper, I'm going to rise with it, and that's what I'm going to do. Also, you want to overlap 50% on your spray pattern. This is more important on the color, but it's also important on the clear to get a uniform clear. So it's important to overlap 50%, meaning you lay down a pattern, and then when you come back the, next, the other direction, you're overlapping 50%. I think you understand what that means. Okay? Um, also, you need to be depending. You know, this varies. As you get more experience, it changes, and you learn how to adjust things. But four to six inches away, I would say more like four to five inches away from the panel, you want to be, depending on your air pressure and your volume, okay? Um, volume on clear, I usually do two and a half turns to start on the volume. Wide open spray pattern typically. Unless I'm doing inside tight areas like this uh, fog lamp housing. I'm going to narrow the pattern. Uh, so wh why you want to narrow that pattern is if you're laying clear and the pattern's this wide, it, there's going to be excess buildup at the edge of the pattern and it could run so you want to narrow the pattern so it can be controlled when you narrow the pattern you have to have a, a farther distance to be safe and you also have to turn your volume down and your pressure so you have to adjust it accordingly I know I'm giving you a lot of information here and it's not gonna you know you're not gonna absorb it all and while you're doing it you're not gonna be perfect the main thing is to trial and error, test, test things, start and move slowly. Don't just start blowing it on there. Just take your time, do a test pass, see how it looks, see how the gloss is, see how the flow is, and then move on from there and make some adjustments. So basically that's all the, the tech tips I can give you right now at this point. We can go in depth into that later on in another video. But I'm going to go ahead and spray this clear. You can watch me, and that will give you an idea of how to go about it. I'm going to just spray it. Um, I'm not going to... I'm going to do it in regular time, the first coat, so you can see how I'm doing it. Um, you can look at it and it has, you know, it's a nice finish, nice gloss, has a, a little bit of dust in it, but that's not a problem. That can uh, be what sanded out, but it's, it's actually pretty clean and the finish is, the gloss is nice, the shine's nice, the metallic's laid down nice. So that's the finished uh, product. I didn't get to show you in regular speed me clearing this, but it's really similar to me spraying the uh, base coat. <clears throat> Basically, you want you don't want to pull the trigger while you're right on the panel, so you want to pull the trigger off the panel and then clear. Okay, that's the most important thing that'll keep you from running it. And even with an aerosol can of clear, you don't really want to pull the trigger on the panel. It's common sense, it because all of a sudden you're loading that spot up with clear and you're not moving fast enough. So you start start it off the panel, and you should be fine. Overlap 50%, you should be fine. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and share this video. And we'll see you next time.